And if I know that I can be anyone from the Dalai Lama to Pol Pot or Hitler, then the responsibility is mine to keep watch and make sure that when negative or hateful or envious or competitive emotions come up, I keep my little corner of the world clean and I don't let them out. I may not like the fact that I'm made of the same stuff as Donald Trump, but it's true. And what it means is that when you talk to people, you can't talk to them as if the evil's out there and you represent goodness. Because there'll be some time when you're not. You lose your temper, you give the driver that cut you off the finger, that's very close to pulling a trigger. Not many of us will actually be able to be with Peter Coyote right there in his living room. But each of us has a really special place where we feel most at home. And for me, it's right here at the top of Mount Tamalpais. I mean, just look around at the beauty here. This is where I feel the most mojo in my life. And I'm grateful to the people who preserve this place. There were quite a few people, my heroes actually, who fought hard over the last few decades to preserve this incredible beauty all around us. I mean, it's actually 80 continuous miles of open space, starting at the north end of the Golden Gate Bridge and going all the way up there past Tamales Bay. That's incredible, and their foresight to preserve it is what makes this experience possible today. I just want you to let that sink in. Preservation creates experience. With the Wisdom VR project, our mission is to preserve the most intimate dimensions of the great teachers of our time for our grandchildren beyond that. I confess. I have no argument to convince... Imagine if we could have been able to be with Gandhi in his tiny attic bedroom. And God grant that we will never bow before the gods of evil. Or to sit in the pews of the Ebenezer Baptist Church in Atlanta while Dr. Martin Luther King was practicing one of his sermons. What would it have been like to be face to face with them, fully immersed in the places they call home, while they told you a powerful story from their lives. Those people are gone now, but we still have the opportunity to be with the Dalai Lama at his hilltop home in Dharamsala, or with Ruth Bader Ginsburg in her chambers at the Supreme Court. We can preserve direct one-to-one -one experiences with wisdom teachers, both known and unknown, and we're freely open sourcing all of this for the public good. We value these people so highly, and the experience of being with them is ephemeral. So we've begun already. You can be with some of them right now. Your death, the first part, doctor, doctor, save me, save me. And And the second half. Yeah. Wow. 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 He would embrace me on that stage. And the three of us, before that slave-built White House, would be standing before the nation blending those times of 1863 and 1921 of my birth, 1846 of her birth, and 2009, the birth, the presidency of the first African-American president. We'd all be on that stage together. And we were, in those moments, the American narrative. Dance is a wonderful way to express yourself 
because it's your body, it's your instrument. It's not a paintbrush or a paper pencil writing. It's, it's you, your body. And to be able to turn on some music and just dance, just let your body go. Just let it, let it be free. Let it move the way it wants to move. And you'll be dancing your dance. That's as simple as that. If you have prayers for loved ones, I suggest you launch them from this special spot, once again filled with the prayers of 10,000 young people. And then, after emptying your heart into the center of the labyrinth, you rise up and follow the path out, thinking of each step as you take as a prayer for peace on the planet.